We're back in range. We got the internet. So we're live driving in the desert. Whole desert moon tonight. Our trip will take us from north of Wickenburg here through Wickenburg into Phoenix past the Lake Pleasant area into Arizona's biggest cities and around the north side into the east side into Scottsdale we made it we got through the mountains safely it's a Friday night it's a good Friday happy Easter everyone Easter 2022 Coming up on my 12th birthday. It's actually already passed. It's on the 10th from my heart situation. Forgot all about it. That was five days ago. It was on Easter Sunday of 2010. Here we are 12 years later. Some people say this channel acts like it's a 12-year-old channel. We are live, heading south and eastbound on Highway 93. Well, that's <laughs> 12 years old, yes. Some of us do. Happy loon to you. It's a full loon tonight. This is the northern part of the Wickenburg general area. Still quite a ways to go to get to Wickenburg. see the lights of Phoenix reflecting off the clouds in the sky off in the distance. About 70 miles from Phoenix. With us earlier, we started off in Nevada. I closed the door while we're driving there, sorry. Start off in Nevada. Officer right there. Side of the road, do you see that? That's why you always do the speed limit. Ha! Except for opening the door in front of the officer while driving. A good maneuver. Hands free driving, middle of the night. Usually one or two on this stretch here. People like to gun it. Pleasant evening. It says 66 degrees in the exterior, right? Or 70. 66? 66. There we go. 66 degrees outside. A lot cooler than it was in Vegas earlier today. Off in the distance to see the lights of Wickenburg. And then beyond that is Phoenix. Phone says we're about an hour and a half away from our destination. squeezing back down to two lanes here in a few moments take advantage of the uh, last little bit of two-lane road here to get past this guy so take us directly into Wickenburg a couple of speed areas coming up You're driving south from Vegas to Phoenix be aware of your highway slowdown points Traffic circles, intersection to the road that takes you up to Congress and Yarnell. Playing the home game. Ryan S., how you doing? Appreciate you being here. Yeah, it's great to have uh, 27 people in the car with me. Definitely keep awake. Looking for. Uh, Raccoons on the side of the road, just spotting raccoons left and right. 
Matt S, how are you doing? All the S's are here. Might be some Kino later, depends on where we end up. Gonna go pick up the misses, get some ice cream. Kino, who knows? Play some of those uh, funky little slots that she likes. Not sure which one of the uh, many Phoenix area casinos we'll end up at. You never know. I have two lives going at once, how that happened? The other one's a mistake. If it's, is it still on? Sometimes that happens out here when the internet's all jacked up. So everyone's over on the other one, huh? <laughs> Hopefully that one's uh, a lot more fun. The other ones you're locked in the trunk. <laughs> Must be buffering. Everyone left the other one good. I tried to fire it up. I was out. Uh, I had to drive another five miles before it actually came on. Deb, how you doing? We are back. Phantom Gamer, good to have you here. We're on our way to Phoenix, Arizona via Highway 93. We are not there yet. Once we get to Phoenix, we'll cut over to Scottsdale. Very pleasant night. Now up to 69 degrees. Speed reduced ahead. This one they are uh, very serious about. There's usually a cop or two sitting in the intersection here, so we're going to slow it down to the 55. For those of you playing the home driving game, follow the rules. You can't really see them till it's too late, so might as well do the right thing. Because the few moments that you would save speeding, you lose when you have to sit there for 30 minutes getting a ticket. And it's just safe for everyone. Intersection of Junction 89, this will take you north to Congress, Arizona. One time I was in Congress, Arizona. I can drive 55. A couple more of these traffic circles coming up, then we'll be in the middle of Wickenburg, Arizona. Founded in 1863. 2007, I think it is the uh, elevation. I'm sure we'll see something unidentifiable coming up. It's Arizona after all. Search and destroy, how you doing? I'm sorry, 2,093 feet. That's the elevation of Wickenburg. Founded 1863, an old western town. A little copper mining in the area, some mercury. Some other uh, rare elements, cattle, silver kino, Gary, how you doing? Welcome to Arizona. Paul Martinez is here. Happy Easter to everyone. Exactly. Hopefully everyone got a nice holiday planned. Celebrations, family, food the occasional live stream. Safe driving is our middle name, man. Haven't seen too many uh, issues along, excuse me, along the way. No uh, traffic accidents really. Did have a uh, about a 10 minute video I did in the middle of the mountains there. There's a couple of tow trucks like they were cruising for trouble. Had their lights on, pulling off to the side of the road, stopping. 58 miles to the center of Phoenix. Juan Bueno, how you doing? Welcome. Welcome to Arizona. Full loon guiding us in. Back in the 80s, I would drive this road. It's two lanes both ways, all the way up and back. My Datsun 280ZX stick shift. 
1978 Chickmobile. Aliens love Arizona. I think they have dual citizenship here. Definitely a full loon tonight. The M Life lady, how you doing? Uh, going home. Got two homes. Got one in Phoenix, one in uh, Las Vegas. This is the other one. Spend the weekend uh, relaxing, enjoying, doing the stuff that you do at a home. Shopping, getting a haircut, eating. Occasional uh, live broadcast. Yep, doing it right. It's about, it was here last weekend, but I got sick with all the pollen in the air, so I had to leave right away. And uh, fortunately, I can come right back. We've got quality people managing the hotel. Still on call 24 hours a day, but uh, cool. What part of the world are you in, the M Live lady? Good to have you here. Status full, Wickenburg, Arizona bound. Exactly. I live in Arizona. Cool. Keon, how you doing? <laughs> James, everything but the haircut tonight. You cut your own hair? Cool. That's one of those things that if I had to do it all over again, I might have bought a hair salon or a uh, sports clips or something. Would have been worth that just for the free haircuts on my schedule. I have the app, so I you know, usually don't wait longer than 10 minutes, but uh, still. Yep, the town car and similar like driving a cloud. It's been really, really peaceful. Hopefully we get abducted. <laughs> And uh, car and all. You want to see how the aliens live? We could probably make that arrangement for you. Saves 20 bucks. That's right. I think I add that up. Let's say you did one a month your whole life. 20 bucks, $240 a year times 40, 50, 60 years with interest. It's a lot of money. Playing the home game. <laughs> Another traffic circle. Uh, the aliens will have something similar to a Kino machine. But I think it only has to do with one digit. Sometimes two digits. Whole different pattern. Twelve twenty nine TMC. How you doing? Welcome back. So we are uh, alien jerky. Delicious. I hate roundabouts. I hate the traffic circles. I hate them. I will go on. I will take a stand on that. I'm anti traffic circle. Aliens don't like the. Tra I'm sure. Actually, they probably do like the traffic circles because they're slows everybody down and they have a better chance of catching people. Wickenburg is a cute little town. Lots of fun stuff to do. Stay out of Boston. <laughs> exactly. One of those sucks cuts from Wayne's World. <laughs> the Flovey. Remember that from back in the 80s? The Ron Popeil pocket fisherman guy. Yeah, the traffic circle, you know, let me stop at a light. Let me uh, cross straight. Let me do all those things. Start getting in a circle there. and Yeah. The moment I get to a light, I complain about it. Which is a traffic circle, man. They still sell the Floby. <laughs> Floby. Uh, was it, uh, what, what show is that with... Uh, Jason Bateman and the other kid Boner and I think Alan Thicke was on it. No, I don't know. They they would they would use that. I'm 
North Bay area likes traffic circles. I mean, I almost flipped my car right there because of a traffic circle. Now this area here is 30 miles an hour. Got growing pains, thank you. Yes, growing pains. Thank you for that. You guys are the best when it comes to trivia. Coach, another live stream is fascinating. You've been watching those circle things. <laughs> no jerk, George Clooney cut his t yeah his own hair with a flubby. Yep. <laughs> uh, definitely driving safely. Paying attention to the road, officer. Not to be confused with growing pain. Groin pains. Oh, hey now. Told over pain. Fifty two to Phoenix. Take off the overdrive. Uh no no if I really need I got brought some dirty clothes from the week, but I don't really need to go crazy this weekend. Any streams depend what dimension you're in. <laughs> True. In multiple dimensions, multiple streams. So I think the other one, if it's on there, I tried to, I started it and it wouldn't do anything. I was out, still out in the desert too far. So I tried to shut it off. It wouldn't shut off. I actually shut the phone off and reset it. Started this one and then everyone's telling me it's still on there. This road reminds you of Palm Springs? When it's really hot, I guess it would. Super hot. Had some massive belly pain. Still got them from that ice cream and the uh, Diet Pepsi. Probably not a good mix. We'll avoid that in the future, but those onion rings are delicious. I bring our interdimensional portal from Rick and Mo. I do not have one of those, unfortunately. Rick and Morty. Spell check. Should kick it up to 65 miles an hour here. Nope, still 45. Don't want to jump the gun. All works well. We'll be uh, pulling into Scottsdale in about an hour and 10 minutes. The flux capacitor is working if I can get up to 88 miles per hour. No problem. Tired is acceptable on this channel. One of the many things we accept. We're 100% semi pure. Highway 111, new white water off Interstate 10 in the Coachella Valley. Looks like this road, cool. What's that place out by Odessa, Texas that uh, they have the lights, the fake lights running on the highway all the time? I don't remember the name of that place. Never did go out there. Oh, it'll come to me. Little fake town. Everyone talked about it like it was the place to go when we're out there. Never did go. But this is an interesting little place. I think the people there have been smelling the gas fumes way too long. Maybe. Miles per gallon check. Uh, let me pull that up for you. One second here. Let me get past this truck that stopped on the side of the road. has to drive safely. The car behind me that didn't maneuver as I did can now go around me. And in just a moment, we'll show you the 18.3 miles to the gallon. Eventually. I just want to go around. There we go. I'll slow it down for him. 
Now he has to go around. Late night driving, middle of the desert. Ah, New Mexico. There we go, 18.3, and we're at 136,626.7 miles, heading southeast. It's now 58 degrees outside. It cooled down big time here in this little valley. Almost a 12 degree drop there. See the lights off in the distance, that is Phoenix. How far to Reno? Uh, it's a long way from Vegas and then add 250 miles to it. Starbright Village. What's in Phoenix? Uh, family, place in Scottsdale, shopping, haircuts, cactus, pollen. Phoenix Lights, great movie, Ridley Scott. I've seen some strange stuff out here. I believe that what I saw, I saw. Saguaro Cactus is everywhere. They're gonna be awesome looking in the uh, silhouette of the sky tonight. Do my Saguaro impression as we drive by. One hand up, one hand down. Basically, do Gumby, you're doing the same thing. Uh, back in 1983, 1984, 83 or 84, somewhere in that time zone, my older brother and I were driving in northern Arizona down by Prescott, and uh, he was into a lot of stuff. And we saw this glowing forest off to the side. We're heading southbound on whatever road that was. I don't know how we got there, why we were there. And the glowing forest, and all of a sudden the engine died completely. Shut down, couldn't start. We just sat there, and he didn't act scared or nothing. He was just like waiting it out. And uh, you hear the noises and the stuff and the wind blowing and try to start it up, doesn't do anything, just sitting there. After about half an hour, he goes, try now. Fires right up, drive all the way back to Phoenix. Years later, when I really understood what he was into, the government programs he worked on, things like that, my theory was that was an electrical, the EMP, uh, the, the electrical magnetic pulse test out in the mountains of Arizona. And he wasn't allowed to be at the actual test of it, but he knew about it. And so he had me drive him up there. And, uh, and, and so that's my theory from the Earth side of it. The other side of it is, it's like the uh, Witch Mountain or the uh, Close Encounters type thing where we just happened to be in the area and he just wanted to see the effect of a spaceship landing and taking off on a 1978 Nissan 280ZX. Stick shift, manual. One of those deals, so it was, something happened. Something was there, we were there. Felt really weird, not creepy, not good, not bad, just different. It was years later when I figured all that out. One time we were driving from San Diego to Phoenix and there's three of us. I was in my 1989 white Mustang, two door red velvet interior. Awesome, awesome vehicle. I wanna get it one day. I want to buy it back. Parents were in their van, and uh, whatever my brother's driving, is 1978 El Camino. And the van gets stuck in the, de in the desert. This is by the sand dunes down by Yuma. And out of the blue, this Jeep thing pulls up, and they jump out, and they got chains, and they hook it up to the van and pull my parents out. And we uh, all laugh, and uh, my dad says, where are you headed to? Oh, we're on our way to Phoenix. Where are you coming from? Riverside. And we're like, okay. I mean, Riverside, you just take the 10 all the way. It makes absolutely no sense. Well, we took a few pictures, had some good times. 
years later, we're going through photos, and I still have this photo, and one of these days when we do the photo search, uh, we found the photo of the Jeep, and the Jeep was there, but there was nobody in it. You look at it, there's no human beings in that Jeep that showed up out of the blue to pull us out of the desert. I actually have the photo. So one of these days we'll do photo searching. I got thousands of photos from growing up. Stuff like that, it's really cool. And then there was the time in Alaska. Am I scary? I shouldn't scare you. <laughs> Here we go. It's a 30 miles across the northern part of uh, the Phoenix area here. Coach, you have a great late night radio voice. Thank you. Let's start doing the uh, late night with Catch Your Grass. Gotta get some of that weird music. True or false? Stuff happens. We'll explore that right after our next commercial break. This could be a car, could be a spaceship. We don't know yet. The answer will shock you. Yeah, it was a car. I love doing coach to coach. To coach. <laughs> I love doing radio. So much fun. Twilight Zone. Radio, I mean, TV and movies and all that fun stuff and uh, comedy. There's a lot of visual. It's the word pictures that you can create. Uh, no Alaska Bigfoot stories, but uh, barium rocket northern lights. And I've, told, I've talked about it before, the harm ray that was used to defeat the Soviet Union by changing weather patterns over the North Pole. I was privy to some things as a youth that many people, I thought everyone was privy to. I got to go to some NORAD radar stations and hang out. It's the Harp Ray or Harm Ray? I think it's the Harp. H-A-R-P. Anyway, my brother, Nick Begich Jr. and a bunch of these guys were all involved in that kind of stuff up in Alaska. I think my brother was a lieutenant colonel in the Air National Guard of Alaska. Didn't know that. Black pyramids under the ice? Is that what you're talking about? How about the uh, coal mines in the middle of absolutely nowhere? The Usabelli coal mines between Anchorage and Fairbanks down by McKinley. I spent many, many nights, many weeks in the wilderness of Alaska by myself hiking in touch with nature, in touch with what's out there. And oh my goodness, so much fun. Oh, did the stream buffer? Oh, I'll have to go back and find out what it was you didn't hear. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody. <laughs> uh, you don't get the giant spatula. You can't see it. It's actually uh, it's a radar transmission unit. You had no buffer there? Good. I don't think our, our government is hiding aliens. I think the alien government is hiding aliens. Uh, we're probably about 45 miles to Phoenix. It's another 25 or so to the Interstate 17. We will have some buffer coming up. So be ready. <laughs> it's all good, everybody. You see Phoenix off to the right there? Those are the lights of Phoenix. That's the uh, far western side. I have a theory on uh, our recent medical situation that uh, someday I'll share. I'll do a whole show on it because I'm sure it'll get kicked off. But uh, full on theory about what's happened since uh, late 2019. It's exactly what they've never told you. Aliens do carpool, it saves a lot of energy. 
Sounds like ancient alien stuff, man. I could have a beer with you. I'd love to sit. Uh, conspiracy theories, that kind of stuff. I grew up in a place in a time that we would vote to secede from the United States every year. Then we just didn't have the money to do it. Very libertarian, very get out of my business, anti everything. Dad worked for uh, aerospace. Oh, wow. You have stories, yes. So in the Concorde, remember the Concorde back in the 70s? They were testing it out in the cold weather. They flew it into Isleson Air Force Base in Fairbanks, Alaska area. I was there, young kid, went there. My father was the editor of the second largest newspaper in Alaska at the time. And we went out there. We were uh, at the hangar when it landed, got a tour of it, all this kind of stuff. Just thought everyone got stuff like that. Got to hang out with uh, politicians and people in DC back in 1980, 81, and 82. Had a recur recurring dream as a Ute that I believe is true. And then when I had my heart thing 10 years and five days ago, I have to do a little space travel myself, so. Yeah, no, no, nothing that uh, violates our channel policy of family-friendly fun. Nothing controversial like alien stuff. No probing jokes. <laughs> Ah, be clever. Everyone be clever. Be inventive. Use wordsmithing to get your message across without violating policies and procedures. School buses. So about a month ago, the moon was just coming up about this time. Made this drive back Wednesday? Cool. It's a nice drive. Hey now. Sometimes doctors will do that. It's for your health and the benefit of everyone. I've had a few oscopies in my life. Various orifices. Various offices as well. When is the next Haley's Comet? Isn't that like uh, 58 years from now? Conan says, nobody landed on the moon. I beg to differ. What if everyone from the moon landed on Earth? What if? Don't forget the third landing caused, or third leading cause of death is medical malpractice. right stuff. What advice would you give your 18-year-old self? Ah, uh, that's a great question. When I was 18, I was pretty well aware of everything, but I was also pretty naive about a lot of stuff. So I was here in Arizona. I was at Arizona State University, and uh, probably would tell myself that Everyone else around me is just as awkward as I am. Even though they are acting like they got their stuff together, they probably don't. So don't be intimidated by that. Do the best you can with what you got and be the best you are. That's right, ASU, go Sun Devils. My age itself was pretty cool. It's when I got 23 or 24, that's when uh, the whole period of time I went to a race. About three years there of, uh... <laughs> yeah, we're going to buffer out here. It's Highway 74 north of Phoenix, coming over to Interstate 17. And again, we will buffer, so don't panic. We'll try to keep it here with you. It's going to buffer. 
thought you tuned to tune in to Tony Robbins. Well, I do. Uh, one of these days, I'll do a whole story on all the uh, tragedies I dodged in my life because I had a sixth sense. Can I stop at Metro Center? We could do that. Ride the uh, whatever that droppy thing is. It. Anthony, how you doing? You're in Arizona. There, we're back. Everyone, hang on. Internet, in and out. You guys, take care of the uh, chat. There you go. Highway stories are the best. So, do a stream this week with my uh, record player and the old 45 station. Lots of buffers. <laughs> what motivates me most in life? Taking care of my family, my kids, feeding them, making sure they get education, that they're well-rounded and situated to take on all the crap life has to give them. They're uh, three spectacular, awesome people. Couldn't be prouder. They've done well. They will do well enjoyment for my own stuff then you take care of the family now I get to go back to doing fun things I get to manage a hotel in Vegas and do a YouTube channel be better I'm very blessed in my life I try to share that joy and oh yeah Kino I've uh, Mino in now and again it's a numbers thing it's all about the math that's what it is. What do the kids think about the YouTube channel? They are awesomely supportive. They've designed lots of artwork and promotional things and great advice. Each one of them has shared ideas and feedback. And uh, many of my early watch hours were based on them and their pets. Listening for Steve Late Night is a voice of darkness broadcasting from secluded highways and back roads in the deserts of Arizona and Nevada. Thank you for checking in. <laughs> Arizona Cowgirl, how's it going? Actually getting more signal out here than I thought. You can see Cave Creek off in the distance. Who was your hero growing up? Uh, my heroes were comedians. People that can make people laugh. I really enjoyed comedians uh, sports heroes I had sports heroes and uh, honestly my father is a, a person my mother is a person as business people emulate their approach to life and their caring of other human beings and operate at a higher level in business it's easy to screw people off it's harder to do it the right way but it's much more rewarding in my I've been very, very blessed. I enjoyed the show he put on. Well, it helps to have great aunts and uncles, too. I've been blessed with uh, mentors in the uh, world of business to show me the right way and to correct when I would do something incorrect. Best late night combos? Well, I loved Letterman early on in his career. I just love the craziness, the wackiness, the unpredictability. Even though it was all planned and rehearsed, it was unpredictable. To me, that's the best. Have I done a trip to the California coastline? Curious how for a drive from Phoenix. Uh, it's a long way to the coast from Phoenix. But once you get there, you go up and down, up and down. Well, Mrs. Cash is the one who gets all the credit on the kids. I gave them height. That's all I gave them, height. <laughs> Peter from Australia, how you doing? We're pulling into Phoenix see the lights off in the distance we have a dip down here we go through a, uh, a river valley as we go in front of the Lake Pleasant Reservoir here 
Best thing about being a hotel manager, all the free little soaps I can eat. That was a joke, don't eat little soaps. Cool, this is, this is our best view ever this way. The uh, meeting people, getting to know people. Many of my best friends now are former guests. Your goal in life is to live in a van down by the river? I can help you with that. I know a guy. Protein subs. <laughs> yeah. uh, I must have missed a whole bunch there. Ten miles to Interstate 17, 37 to Phoenix. We're going to actually cut north of Phoenix into Scottsdale. I'll keep you with me all the way to the exit. You want to get a new van if you're living in a van down by the river. Although the used vans are cool, like the one in the movie or the TV show Lost. One of those type of vans would be awesome to live in down by the river. Karnak the Magnificent was pure gold, yes. A shortcut. Oh, AG, if it's the real AG, come on, you know better than that. If it's the fake AG, what up? Why are you doing it? Everyone be nice. What would I sing at a karaoke night? That's easy. I do Elvira and the Humpty Dance. Giddy up, a boom, bop, a boom, bop, a bow, bow. You know, the Oak Ridge Boys. Paint your van like the mystery machine. That'd be classically fun. So this is the area we saw the spaceships the other night, uh, about two years ago. The used van is best. All right, keep my eye on the road here for a minute. Elvira is great. My heart's on fire for Elvira. Uh, we're not on our way to Elko, no. Yeah, if you go back to his January 2nd of 2021, a video of spaceships over this part of the desert in formation. Keon, how are you doing? Thanks for joining Lurkers. Appreciate it. Not much in Elko. Been to Elko a few times. It's nice. Thank you, Keon Green. But the uh, video I took out here has been used on many international UFO channels, with my permission, of course. There's a couple, uh, one from Japan was like a 15 minute video, they used three minutes of mine. And one in Korea used about half their video was my video. From the Arizona desert. I think we got four or five UFO videos. There's a great taco stand in Elko, good to know. Slot Cali, how you doing? We're gonna hitch a ride with aliens, that's what we're here for. Where's two pet peeves? <laughs> I don't know, there's so many. So many. Ah, so many. <laughs> I'm very difficult. You're witnessing the Phoenix Lights or you witnessed? Ah, oh, definitely not scared by UFOs. I'm bigger than them. They don't scare me. They have ray guns. Eh. What are you going to do? I have a Slim Whitman album. I'm ready to go. Una Paloma Blanca. Yeah, we're on the, we're on the easiest part of the trip now. If you're looking to the left and right, check out for the silhouettes of all these swirl cactuses here. Traffic on the strip, definitely a pet peeve. <laughs> hey, Denise, how you doing? Seriously, where are we going? Uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Looking for mariachi music. I love mariachi music. 
Pet peeves, my goodness. So, early on in my life, I think the kid's name was Vincent. He was in the desk next to me in second grade or first grade, first or second grade, at Nordell Elementary School in Fairbanks, Alaska. There was a piece of candy in his desk. And he had a bunch of candy. He was giving candy to everybody, I believe. Or I've made this up to justify what I did. Who knows? But I took a piece of candy out of his desk because he wouldn't give me one. Maybe I asked him for one. He told me to stick it. He gave it to other people. Wouldn't give me one. Was taunting me. It's his fault because that's my memory. Anyway, I'm out on the playground and he knew I had taken his candy probably because I left the wrapper on my desk. I mean, who knows? I wasn't a really good criminal back at first or second grade. And I remember him pounding my head until I spit the candy out. Just pounding on me. So nowadays, if I eat candy or anything, I chew it and swallow it as quick as I can. All because of that trauma as a child. People without common sense, definitely a pet peeve. Something just so obvious and they don't get it. <laughs> yeah, ice cream machines at McDonald's are pet peeve when they don't work. John Boy, 76, how you doing? Cinco de Mayo coming up. Yes, I didn't catch the rest of that. Sorry. Trying to catch most of it while I drive. I've got a car behind me, got cars in front of me. Safety, first and second. That's our motto. Slowing down to 55, down to 45. Going by the uh, fish and game department here. Just a couple of shooting here. There's uh, all kinds of fun stuff. I'm a stickler for speed limits. I don't like exceeding them ever. Ish. It's what's lurking inside the machines. I'm sure they're well kept, cleaned all the time. Cinco de Mayo burritos. Just say what? <laughs> I can't. I can't read that. Sorry. Did you say just say John Guido while I'm eating candy? Is that what you said? One traffic light in this 30 mile road. Back to 55. Colin. John Kaido says hi. Did I get your pet peeve right, Steve? Or at least close? Uh, I didn't see what you typed in, but I'm going to let it go. <laughs> Pretend like I never saw anything. Let me, uh, let me go back and see if I can find it real quick. Ah, staying on the road while I read, while I drive. That's one of my pet peeves. I have to say it again. I'm sorry, I can't go back. No looking back. On the road again. Special event ahead. Uh-oh. Said, uh, people who live in two people who are two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep, exactly. Oh, yeah, just tell me the truth. If you hate me, you hate me. If you like me, you like me. If you, you're gonna rip me off, just tell me you're gonna rip me off. I'll still probably invest. Yeah, lying people and uh, two facers, but that's I'm sure everybody's pet peeve, exactly. But I've learned to be very skeptical in uh not look at anything at face value. Always do a deep dive. Just cause. We're up to 18.4 miles to the gallon. Doing well. John Guido! Oh, love the candy story. Thank you. 999 Super Chat. Appreciate it. It actually happened. That's the first time I've verbalized what happened. I've denied it to the teacher. 
I denied it to everyone, even though I spit the candy out. That's how stupid I was. It was, in the, it was a snowy hill, a super snowy hill, so the candy froze. Oh, for the movie Anger Management, I've never seen that movie. That's one of those I couldn't watch. Oh yeah, fix the windshield, definitely. Any peeps stories? It's Easter. Got some Easter stories. It was on a night like this, many years ago, there was a full moon. <laughs> Tell them Large Marge sent you. Ah uh, yeah, this is my Easter break. Arizona Cowgirl, oh my goodness, $20 super sticker. Hey now. Hey now. Hey now. What up? Buys a lot of cat food. Thank you. <laughs> Holy cow. Arizona Cowgirl. Driving into the Twilight Zone, that's what Phoenix can be. Used to go up on South Mountain and watch the valley. Some storms blow through. Met several aliens in Arizona. It's Coach's Scary Road Stories channel. Anthony left the PB in reference. Very good. <laughs> Uh, on a positive note, gas prices are down. Where? It's payday. Woo! Oh, wow. Fantastic. Paging John Guy Laura R. Hey, Charnay. Rob Wall. It's Real Braun with $2 Super Chat. Payday. Sticker day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Teaching them kids is paying off for me. See all that support I gave you when you're growing up going to your recitals and your uh, things and stuff. I never once complained. <laughs> yeah, good times. Uh, you have a large Marge t-shirt? Awesome. That was so great. Started an ordinary night. So I drove in the twilight zone. <laughs> Hit the twilight zone game for four grand one time at the Clarion. I got all five symbols. Wasn't on the main pay line where you got the three hundred thousand or whatever, but I had four grand. It was nice. What's the one thing I would never do again? Oh, there's so many things I would never do again. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I can't even begin to tell those stories. That's uh that's once I have fifteen to twenty thousand subscribers and I can live off the income from YouTube. <laughs> then I'll tell those stories. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. There's a whole period of that. Thank God for no internet life. <laughs> See, now uh, I gotta put the cork back on the memories. I'm sorry, we're not going there. I'm sure there's still no, there's still some that haven't met statutes of limitations yet. <laughs> John Guido, real Braun, 03, my friend, how are you? 998 Super Chat, thank you, John Guido. Thank you, real Braun, 03. Played Twilight Zone mini golf at Bally's a couple years ago. Tough course. Oh my goodness. I probably would have stopped trying to be cool when I was in college. Just be myself. Had to repeat a day over and over. What day would it be? Oh, there'd be three of those days. Each day my kids were born. One of them, 
I won't say which one. One of them was born the moment the Mariners beat the Yankees in 1995 playoffs to advance for the first time ever to win a playoff series. What was my first job? Well, that's a good, good question because there's a couple. One is I actually worked for myself as a teenager. Stuff. Uh, selling things, coin dealer, stuff like that, collectibles. I don't know. I was just always entrepreneurial. But my first real paid job was at a coin shop. Got $2 an hour in cash or $3 an hour in trade way back then. I got paid big time. It was That's in the 70s. That was good money. And I'd come in after school. I'd help price things. I'd sell stuff over the counter. A very great training ground. And again, blessed to have those mentors. Learned all about numismatics. Many years in my life, made a living selling coins and baseball cards and things like that back in the 80s and 90s. All because of that time. My first real, real job that I got on my own real job that didn't have any help from family or because of who I was, where I was, that kind of a thing that I actually took seriously as a job. Uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, probably a 1984 radio job in Alaska. I had been doing uh, sports casting. I created several commercials, wrote, wrote the copy, did the voice talent. And one day I was screwing around in the production booth of a radio station up in Fairbanks. I did like two hours of just pretending I was a DJ, that kind of thing. And a while later, the station manager got a hold of me. He goes, hey, I heard your audition tape. We'd like to hire you. I'm like, really? Okay. And that was the first real job I got on my own. It was a lot of fun. That was a great time. Again, many stories I can't tell. I'd be a kid again, what age would I be? 16. Old enough to drive and do things, young enough not to go to prison. <laughs> uh, All right, get ready to go east on the 101 loop north of Phoenix towards Scottsdale. We're making good time. Might make it by our 1030 uh, time. Do I know Aaron Phillips, a voice guy in Vegas? I do not know him. would love to meet him. There's a paper boy for the Herald Examiner and the Long Beach Press-Telegram. Cool. Very cool. I did do a paper route, but, you know... In fact, my dad was the editor, probably helped me get that. All the things I did, like going to D.C. as an intern, all those things, they don't count because of uh, the politics of all of it. You were born in 1984? I got shirts older than you. Uh, 84 is a great year. That other question you asked there, uh, that's a whole nother channel and a whole nother string of stories. I'm actually writing a book now, not because I should write a book, but because the, everyone tells me if you want to go on the speaking tour, you got to write a book. So I'm writing a book, or I'm writing, I don't know if it'll be a book. The guy says he'll publish it. Then I can go do my uh, speaking tours. You could do an infomercials, but wait, there's more. I'm going to show you the seven reasons why you should be drinking loon water. The number five reason is going to shock you. Shauna, what's up? How are you? Welcome. Graduated high school in 84. Cool. Very similar. Similar time zone. Real Braun, born in 85. Great year. You took all the money to the arcade. You got fired for your paperboy job. That is uh, one of the problems of uh, collecting quarters. Who is my hero? Current hero? That's a tough one. All my heroes have let me down. 
Most all of them. It used to be Will Smith, but, you know. <laughs> no, the other Will Smith. The baseball player. The one from the Dodgers. They didn't win the World Series last year. The pitcher, yeah, that guy. Not the catcher for the other team. Food water is high in natural fibers and keeps you regular. Graduated in 89, allegedly. Fifth grade was the hardest three years of your life. 1976, though, and we're coming up on the 250th anniversary of our country. I was in fifth grade, and I got to be one of the uh, flute, drum, and flag guys to celebrate our bicentennial. Got to do that. I volunteered to do it so I could get out of class. I mean, I was very patriotic. That's what it was. One of my heroes is Clint Eastwood in the movie Heartbreak Ridge. If you haven't seen Heartbreak Ridge, that was my generation's war. The war broke out on a Thursday. That Friday, we all decided we were going to join up on Monday. War was over by Sunday. We all said, ah, whatever. Dropping links. Is that real bronze link? Everyone get over there and help him get to 1,080 subscribers. On his way to 1,100. Great video, great live down in Detroit the other day. We're going straight east right now. Born in the 60s. I was born late December back in 63, a very special night for me. What a lady, what a, oh no, I was, that's a song, my bad. I've been adopting other people's memories and songs and things, making that my life, my life story. Very boring, so I have to take on other stuff. Sixty-six. Music groups as a teen. Great questions, B. Chris. Uh, Journey, Boston, a little bit of Led Zeppelin, Foreigner, Loverboy, Night Ranger, Van Halen. I am in the witness protection program. Shh, don't tell anyone. Uh, ZZ Top. Where they went full commercial. George Benson, Eddie Money, a little bit. The Pretenders, love the Pretenders. The Cure, In Excess, Queen, Supertramp, ELO, all that, yes. Rush, the Bee Gees, before and after the movie. Uh, one of these days I'll do, uh, I'll play my favorite songs, or at least a few notes of each one. Leo Sayer, Depeche Mode, The Cult, The Cure, Talking Heads, definitely. Same as it ever was, same as it ever was. Joe Jackson, Tony Carey, Steppenwolf, Slim Whitman. <laughs> Uh, Kraftwerk, don't know them. Spyro Gyra, Bob Seger. Like some Elvis, not a lot. Some Wayne Newton, not a lot. The Cars were good. Huey Lewis in the News, unless I already said them. Chicago. Try that, name that tune in a few notes. I'm pretty good. I can get them using one or two notes most of the time. Then there's times when I get confused because they sound exactly the same. That's why I love doing the uh, Fremont Street Experience because we can actually play the cover bands. Kansas, very cool. Doobie Brothers, yes. Smiths a little bit. Pat Benatar, all good bands, all good singers. Scandal, Rat. Africa by Toto, Toto by Africa. The 10 CCs, Manford Man and his Earth Band. New Order, fantastic. 
Jody Watley, Eric Clapton, Michael Jackson. Uh, Miami Sound Machine, but Gloria Stefan and her solo stuff. Phil Collins in 85, 86, when he owned the radios. Michael McDonald, Sweet Freedom, Sugar Hill Gang. Definitely Queen. The Beastie Boys, you got it. No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Look, Luther Bandrus, yes. Steve Winwood, a little bit Deep Purple, but I love White Snake. What's the connection between Deep Purple and White Snake? Someone throw it in there. Grand Funk Railroad. John Denver. Peter Gabriel, you got it. The Pips. Chardet, Stevie Wonder, Santana, outstanding music, oh my goodness, Pink Floyd a little bit, Meatloaf some, Right Said Fred, I'm too sexy for myself, uh, The Police, yes, oh man, Fat Boys, <laughs> I can't even do it anymore, Sting by himself, Tears for Fears, Neil Young, Not the Jerks, Iron Maiden, not so much. New Edition, yes. Yes, New Edition. Real Braun, his music, yes. I have all Real Braun's albums. Tom Petty, outstanding music. Stevie Nicks, solo. Ah, Flock of Seagulls, very commercial. I hate Annie Lennox. I don't know why. Well, I hate Rhythmix. I hate them. She's all right. Fleetwood Max got some good stuff. Krista Berg. Uh, Woman in Red, is that the one? Menudo, no. Eddie Murphy, yes. Not Roxanne, but uh, Party All the Time. Spando Ballet with True. Yes, fantastic. Grateful Dead, uh, they're, they're uh, that one. There's a one song, Grateful Dead, I really like, but it was very popular. It was very commercial. All that stuff. Lindsey Buckingham. I like John Cougar and I like John Mellencamp, but I didn't like John Cougar Mellencamp. Yes, owner of a lonely heart. Uh, their 50120 album. Chris Isaac was okay. Yeah. Beatles, not so much. The Ramones, the Romantics, Rush, Yellow with Chicka Chua. Bow, bow. Chicka Chua. ELO is great. The Gap Band, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Maurice White, oh my goodness. Nah, Springsteen, not really that much. Thoroughgood, yes. Saw Hugh Lewis in the news about 15 years ago. Back to the Future, yeah, Hugh, he lost his voice or his hearing or something. Prince, I loved his early stuff. Uh, his super, super popular stuff. Is overplayed in my opinion. His early stuff. Guess who? Not so much. It's here hearing Zap and Roger. Yes. Oh yeah. Some George Clinton. Bow bow bow. No no. Yippee yo yippee Not chicka wah wah. Sorry. Warren Zevon. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Al Jarreau. Morning, Mr. Radio. Good stuff. Wall of Voodoo. Maybe. Frank Zappa, a little bit. The Moody Blues, some. Wildest dreams of those. Uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash without Young. Name that band, my favorite. My music knowledge is deep and far and wide. Maze Fiction Fame, Frankie Beverly. I'd have to look that one up. The Fix. Red Skies at Night. Whoa, oh. Whoa, oh, 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 Great songs. Frankie Goes to Hollywood, only because of Zoolander. Bad Company. Inicata De Vida. The SOS Band, CCNR, Eagles, yep. Devo Sum. I loved, uh, oh, man. Ronnie Millsap, Waylon Jennings, 
Um, level 42. Who remembers level 42? Cutting crew. Hall and Oates. Super winners. Super winners. Definitely foreigner. BTS. Clint Black. Yeah, a little bit. The Boomtown Rats. There you go. Something about you. Level 42. Duran Duran. Uh... Autograph had a good song. Of course, Def Leppard, all those. Cindy Lauper annoyed me. I don't know why. She had a couple of decent songs, but overplayed. It's almost like, uh, well, there's four or five songs because I was in radio at the time and I had to play their damn music over and over again. Billy Squire. ACDC, Belinda Carlisle, Blondie, Donna Summer, hot stuff, of course. The Kinks. Girl, you really got me now. Uh, in Vogue was good. Melissa Etheridge, some heart, yes. Weird Al Yankovic. David Coverdale, there you go, finally. Wang Chung. Live and Die in LA by Wang Chung. Great tune. Not enough respect for that song. The Tubes. Four tops, the five tops. Frankie Valley, love Frankie Valley. Hungry Like a Wolf was okay. Safety Dance, Men Without Hats. Big Country with Big Country. Cheech and Chong. Oh my goodness, so many great bands. OMD, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark. Yes, OMD, great music. Early 80s. Genesis. It's no fun being an illegal alien. Smokey. I like Millie, not so much Vanilli. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Yes, Neil Diamond coming to America. The jazz singer soundtrack. Madness. Our house in the middle of our street. The motels. Uh, they're, they're Ace of Base, the Motels, those guys, yeah, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, Belinda Carlisle without the Go-Go's. In excess, of course, still a guy off himself. Still laughing at the candy story. <laughs> Rick James. No, 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 no. I can't even do it. But give it to me, baby. George Carlin. Has anyone seen the tubes? <laughs> oh man. Scritty Politty. It was a Scritty it's Scritty Politty. Oh yeah. You need to make a new playlist. So I have on my playlist, I actually saved a bunch of music that was on YouTube. I actually, when I DJ, I do a lot of YouTube songs because they're so cool. I like the original videos. All right, the music thing's coming up. We're going to do a whole music thing. We're going to see what we can get away with because I have the actual original recordings of a bunch of the time, Oak Tree, The Bird, Janis Joplin, Before My Time, Aha, Way Overplayed, Casey and the Sunshine Band. There's like 20 great songs there. The Schmengies, greatest polka music ever. Billy Idol. Uh, yeah, Rick Astley, of course. Coach's playlist coming up. I actually have my uh, makeout mixtape playlist on uh, Cash or Crash here. It's somewhere on there, it's the makeout tape. Good times. Tupac, yes. There's a couple of greats. I love the. Uh, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ice Cube early on, love it. Psychedelic Furs had a few, yep. Tony Bailey, Tony, Tony, Tony. Tony Braxton. The Kenosha Kickers. <laughs> ah. uh, B.I.G. and uh, Biggie Smalls was pretty good. Tone Loke, got to meet him one time in uh, California. Falco, Rock Me Amadeus. 
George Michaels, uh, pre-Fancy Wham, after Fancy Wham, yes. We'll do a 70s, we'll do different decades. What I'm gonna do is with the record collection I got, it's from a bunch of radio stations, it's part of the Lowell Purcell collection. We'll tell stories about the music, when it was I first heard it, why I played it, my favorite request for that song, what it means. These records actually have labels on them, uh, chart topping, where they hit, all that kind of stuff, beats per minute. There's a whole history of these records that uh, will go into it. That's right, Real Brian, you get to pick the music in the radio stations. All right, folks, I'm getting ready to exit the freeway here. We may come back later with Mrs. Cash getting ice cream. Uh, maybe tomorrow. But uh, Taste of Honey, Boogie Oogie. Da Dan Fogelberg. Longer than any bird has had wings. I'm sorry. Got to, I mix up the, the lyrics. But anyway, yes. I love... Ambrosia, oh my goodness, so many great bands, so many great things. All right, coming soon. We will see you guys later tonight, most likely, most likely, uh, but for sure over the weekend. And uh, love this. You guys are the best. Thank you for the super chat, super stuff. And uh, we will see you soon. Say goodnight to each other. Drop your links one more time. I got like another mile and a quarter of my exit here. Loon Radio with your host, Loon. And the butt. Good night, Slot Cali, Real Braun, Brian, Keon. Thank you so much for joining. John Guido says, Yay, or see ya. Good night, everyone. D. Baldy, William, Denise, Sal, thanks for being here. 520, Shri, Mike, MTL. Silver Kino Gary, Jennifer, Michael, A.G. Jordan the Third, Tony, 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 Mosby, X Couch. The church had some good stuff. Good night, Sam. Running with altitudes. Thank you for being here. August Ice, Night Raver, Night Ranger. All good. Brian, have a good night. <laughs>